hello guys so in this video we are going to talk about some advanced c topics to learn because sometimes after completing the basic stuff in c we are in a dilemma that uh, what next what to learn after that what to learn after functions uh, what to learn after pointers etc so here in this video we are going to look at some topics that you must learn in order to uh, increase your understanding of your C programming language. So let's get started. So the first concept that arises uh, in your list is of dynamic memory management. So guys, uh, this is the most important concept when you have done with the basic concepts of C. So uh, what is basically dynamic memory management? It basically deals with the allocation of your space at runtime. So basically in your C programming language, there are two types of memory allocation. One is the static memory allocation and other one is the dynamic memory allocation. So the static allocation is the more basic one and the main idea of static uh, allocation is occur occurs at the stack that means all the variables all the uh, variables that you use uh, simply define for example int a is equal to 2 so the memory is given at the stack okay during the execution the memory is gone to the stack whereas in your dynamic memory management the memory is stored in the heap that means the variable that you are defining it, it would be stored into the heap okay so um, the main advantage of that is unlike stack if you see um, if you have um, studied about trees also so um, sometimes we do find um, stack overflow error okay so that means our stack is having some memory limitation understood so what your memory uh, dynamic memory management does is that the heap area that we are using here it has no uh, variable size limitation so that is an advantage over that as well as extra memory is also not wasted the other reason is that so then you should uh, understand how to write a program in dynamic memory management that means how to define these pointers for example uh, how to define how what is the meaning of this asterisk i what is the meaning of this asterisk a so that these are your declarations to declare and how um, you would define your or provide memory to these is using the malloc point malloc function okay and uh, it is a void pointer so we have type casted into the integer and the float values as necessary so this you would understand when you would learn about a dynamic memory management as well as if you uh, do more and more programs this is the only way that you would understand more and more about these topics so study a theoretical concept as well as start doing practical questions regarding to it then only you would be understanding how things are working okay so this is also more importantly understand about structures unions what is the use of structure what is the use of union so these are all your advanced topics so the uses of dynamic memory management is that when you don't know how much energy or a structure is going to need beforehand that means what would be the size so we don't know a size for example uh, we can define anywhere when where we want uh, our program to work efficiently or we don't know what would be the variable input size how much capacity it would hold so at that time we need of we are in a need of dynamic memory management as well as when we want to scale up your application so as to that uh, needs your matches your user requirements so and other that i was i have already talking about you is that over allocation of memory so dynamic memory management helps us to manage memory at the programmers end not at the computer systems end okay 
so now understanding about function pointers so in order to understand function pointers you need to have a better 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 understanding about pointers so yeah uh, we have made a video regarding pointers also you could check out on the channel uh, so basically what is a function pointer so basically a function pointer is similar to a simple function but the basic difference is that function pointers allow you to call a function with the function memory location so yeah that seems uh, pretty confusing but this is the syntax of declaring a function pointer to a function's memory so this is a pointer to a function okay you would understand this when you would do certain practical problems as well as certain theoretical um, understanding so guys if you want me uh, to create a separate playlist videos for uh, dynamic memory management function pointers yeah guys we are having videos on dynamic memory management so you could check out those we could also make a dedicated video for function pointers if you uh, do comment down below so moving further this is the syntax of defining a function pointer see uh, it is using a point integer pointer as a function parameter okay uh, that is void triple quadruple double so just calling this function see void a function pointer and then this is a now here you have defined a complete set that it would call these three functions in here okay so for is i is equal to 0 i is less than 3 i plus plus as well as you are printing uh, going into the functions as well as printing their values so this is the program uh, you would understand more better when you have a better approach over these topics so yeah at this point it might you might feel that these are difficult topics no these are really easy topics but the whole idea is to imp how are you are implementing these so this is the way and the use of function pointer is that it allows you to pass a function you can even pass a function as an argument to other functions as well as if you don't want to pass that you can use it on other data structures as well okay so you can um, uh, it also reduces the uh, ease uh, and provides a better ease because um, if you use a temporary variables you can instead simply pass the functions result directly to the next function okay so other topic comes here is recursion uh, many people uh, keep recursion in the basic stack whereas uh, I probably feel that recursion is somewhat a kind of an advanced topic so what is recursion uh, when a function calls itself again and again that is recursion so now when or why would you need recursion so sometimes we don't know uh, there might come a case that when you don't know how many iterations that a particular program uh, needs to run okay there is a problem and you have to uh, solve or reach out to its end so you don't know how many iterations that would take it may take 10 50 100 so how many times would you apply the condition so at that time recursion comes so practical example is of tree when you are constructing a tree you have to uh, go deeper and deeper into the tree um, you have to recurse in the child nodes you don't know how uh, what is the depth or height of the tree so at that time your recursion comes into picture so uh, guys uh, i have made certain videos on recursion you might as well check it out on the channel and the, uh, after watching those videos um, I guarantee you that you would get the most out of recursion you would understand what is upper recursion down recursion how certain programs work okay 
so how you define recursion is calling the same function inside the same function uh, giving the base case and the condition in here for the function to terminating condition you can say is the base case and uh, for how many times this function would work so all depends upon your logic nothing done here as much so um, basically what are what is the use of recursion it is used to uh, reorient your problems to focus on the desired condition rather than the number of iterations as i said before um, uh, as well as you should not always use recursion uh, because it is more resource consuming so you have to check that also and uh, and you also need to understand how uh, the recursion stack works that is also we have covered uh, in our recursion videos only and uh, recursion requires repeating of the same steps multiple times as well as you can pursue certain program uh, states as well you can uh, check out what is the state at uh, that point of time using recursion and after that what is or what is next so all these cases are of recursion so what next what after these uh, person who have done all those what he can try is he can learn about the linux or the unix operating system because these are generally uh, built in c language linux kernel is built in c so understand how your linux operating system works that is even more helpful uh, in understanding the topics of uh, advanced data structures as well as when you would be going into the industry uh, fields uh, it would really help you as well as creating libraries in C uh, understand how to create libraries in C um, next you could also read about variable argument list uh, dedicated video has been made on this channel uh, you can check out what is the use of var list var start var end etc etc so with this I hope you understand the understood the concept so yeah okay so if you have any doubt uh, you could comment down below